I've had a few people um, challenge my challenge of the three T's rule and referring to tail heat now, um, or thermosiphoning in the pipework. So I've drawn this little diagram to try and get the point across here that in this diagram we've got a system that doesn't contravene the three T's rule and the argument before was that if we contravened the three T's rule we would get thermosiphoning coming up this pipe here into the to local radiator for example. Um, and I'd just like to point out that that can happen whether we follow the three T's rule or not. So if we position this pipe close to that radiator and we have a rise in the pipework back to that radiator without a contravention of the three T's rule, we can still get the tail heat. Tail heat is not something we're trying to prevent by following the three T's rule. Reverse circulation is what we're trying to prevent by following the three T's rule. And to make my argument clearer, this is the diagram in which they're saying that we get tail heat. Okay. And if you actually work this out, you're no more likely to get tail heat in this one. Also, I suppose actually you're twice as likely to get tail heat because you could pipe it up and get tail heat in two radiators rather than just one um, because you've got two points of connection. Um, but um, that's just a matter of piping it up so you don't get tail heat. It's not something you're trying to avoid by following the three T's rule. Um, if you, long as each zone, so that's after a zone valve, all of the returns are married together before it joins our primary return, um, you can put the hot water cylinder and the radiators in any order on that primary return that you choose without getting reverse circulation. Tail heat you avoid by piping so that you don't get tail heat. You don't avoid it by following the three T's rule. So, okay, I hope that sort of clears up that point. Uh, any other objections, list them and I'll, I'll make another video to explain why I think you're wrong.